It's that time of the year again, when my brain decides to pick up a new hobby. This time, it's clay. This clay was so hard to work with. This isn't exactly my first time working with clay. I've used female before, but let me tell you, this clay was so hard to work with. It was brittle and very hard to knead. Uh, maybe I'm just weak, but it was not a pleasant time. I really tried to make this clay work. If someone with chronic pain, it really took a toll on my fingers and wrists. But I managed to uh, get it somewhat rolled out. I was gonna make this into an egg-shaped coaster, but um, things didn't go as planned. I burnt did. Okay, so I thought that if I bought a 400 degree um, oven, I could cook it at 400 for only half of the time it says in the package, right? Um, turns out it was 400 the whole time, so it's burnt. <laughs> so I'm gonna retry it. back 
with an oven. This time, I made sure that there's temperature control on it because um, I don't want to burn stuff again because there was a lot of smoke in the house. I gave this clay another chance, but it didn't work, so I bought another brand of clay. In the meantime, I sketched out some doodles of what I wanted to make. Then I transferred it onto cardstock or any thick paper to make a stencil. Then I cut out the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. I recommend using sharper scissors, unlike the ones I used. I got my clay package. This time, it's sculptly original. I read reviews that it was a softer clay. The reviews are right. It is indeed a soft clay. It was very easy to work with and it took no time to become soft. After kneading it, I flattened out the clay, making sure it's flat and even. I made my clay a little bit thick, but I made my later pins a little bit thinner, which turned out better. I laid my cutouts on top and using a sharp tool, I cut it out. It can be an exacto knife if you have one. If the edges are not smooth, you can use rubbing alcohol to smoothen it out. It's baking time. For this pan, it's 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the thickness. If you are using a different brand, make sure to look on the package for cookie times. Let's hope I don't burn it this time. By luck, it came out perfectly. I use a nail file to smooth it out any uneven or sharp corners. They are all smooth, ready to be painted. Today, I'll be using Artisa's gouache paint, but you can use any acrylic paint as well. To make holding the pins easier to paint, I use wine corks and sticky dots to hold the pins in place while I paint.
we can start painting now. Evenly paint your desired paint. A quick tip I wanted to mention is that your paint colors will get a little bit darker once you put on the resin, so pick your colors wisely. Make sure to get all the sides and wait for the paint to dry if you are layering like I did. Using a heat gun will dry your paint faster if you have one. It's time to make your pin shiny. You can do this with UV resin or paint varnish. Today, I'm using UV resin because it's more durable and shiny. For the brush, it's hard to clean off so use a brush you don't mind throwing away. I use an old makeup brush. I recommend painting the sides first, then painting the top. To make it shinier, I apply a thicker amount of resin on top. If there's bubbles, use a toothpick to get rid of them, or a heat source like I am. If you're not an adult, ask one for help. Put the pin in a UV lamp for it to cure. It is usually 10 seconds for it to harden, but at least 3 minutes for it to fully cure. If you do not have a lamp, putting it outside in sunlight works as well. This is optional, but I painted the backs as well. After they dry, I put a dab of resin on each pin and place a pin back on each one. Then flash curing them so it stays in place. After that, I will put resin on the full back of the pins. You can add glitters in the back if you like. And that's how I made my pins. This video took a lot longer than I expected because of all my mess ups, but I enjoyed the process. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on this video. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from my viewers and I'm always looking for ways to improve my content. Thank you again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.